Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I am changing positions. <laughs> so, I am using a new tripod and it's very shorter than my last one. So now I've got to try and sort that out. Yikes. So, actually yeah, so this is the book I've got. So I realise I haven't uploaded in a while, um, so it's taken me a while lot longer to read. Um, because I'm more focused on other things. But here we go. We have You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen M. McManus. So this was a book that I got in the, was it Beacon Box? It was one of the two, I can't remember which one. But this was the book I got. So we have it, this is the cover. Very pretty cover. The back, keep your friends close and your enemies close now. So I open it up and this is the hardback with some red spines. Also, how that looks in the camera. <laughs> we do have an autograph signature, which is lovely. And that is it, pretty much. Well, you can see the author, what she looks like. And the other book she has also done. So this book I was really looking forward to. Out. Um, because um, it was more of a, it was like a different book that we normally read for two fantasy. This was a crime kind of this one so i'll read the stops in a second so this book really got me because i was like oh that sounds pretty good i'll explain why ivy made matteo and cal used to be close now they all have in common is colton high and the beginning of a very bad day so it starts out with these guys introducing themselves um it is three um Kind of own perceptive of their own side of the story, almost with their names. It's obviously got the three names: Ivy, Mateo, and Cal. So Ivy is um, someone who was is very smart, basically, but her brother is smart apparently, and her parents doesn't really have all that to her. Um, but Ivy is someone who is not is always the student has a present on, but because this year she didn't actually get voted to be one. This other kid called Brian Mahoney, um, aka Boney Mahoney, um, got elected instead, and she was quite peed off with it. She was like, she was upset. She has never taken basically a day off of school. She's always gone. She's always full attendance. But today she decided she doesn't want to go to school, and she doesn't really want to care. So she then she sees um, Cal, um, sitting sad in his car. He doesn't want to go into football school. Because he basically he just broke well his girlfriend broke up with him because he um she doesn't feel like he was into her anymore she wasn't fun because she was more of a ooh, <laughs> because all she did pretty much was eat salads and be healthy every single time and he was bored eating the same spinach salad every single day and then we have Mateo who basically is basically more of a loner. Um, but his family just lost their um, their their place. No, what's it called? Their workplace place thing. And he's trying to. He works at another job at a pub. As long as he doesn't serve alcohol, he's okay. Um, so these people they met before when they were younger, when they didn't want to go to a school, um, a school trip, and they decided to skip and go to the mall and hang around there. Then they decided to. All these bad things happening. They decided to. You know what? Let's go and skip school. They've never skipped. He's never skipped. Uh, like I said, I've never skipped school before. So, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Cal rings the school up and pretends to be Ivy's dad, saying that she's not going to be in. Then Ivy had to call to, for Cal, saying that he's her mother, um, his mother, and saying that she's he's not going to be in. And then she had to do the same for Mateo as well, which is like what? Um, very confusing. And that's this is when they start to go downhill. So type A, Ivy, lost her student council elect to the class clown and now she has to face the school humiliate 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 I can't say it. Heartthrob Mateo is burned out and he's been working two jobs since his family's business failed. There you go, that's family business. And outside of cow has just got stood up again. 
So when Cal pulls up onto campus late for class and runs into Ivy and Mateo, it seems like the perfect opportunity to turn to, turn to a bad day round. They ditch and go into the city, just the three of them, just like old times. Um, except that they barely left the parking lot before they ran out of things to say. Until they spot someone else. So the school was having a um, speech for the letter uh, Christian camp president, which was Bernie Mahoney, and they saw him, this this person, exact same place where these three guys are, head into a specific art studio. And Cal knows this person, this woman, because teachers, a teacher, an art teacher, and student mixed together. Um, so he, Bernie goes into this art uh, studio and Ivy got really peed off because Cal knew that, like, she was raging in there and um, but she didn't know what the past was, um, since Cal was like, oh, you can't go in there, it's this place where landlord was supposed to be closing, but some people, some people still do use it. And the fact that this person, um, is an art student, we find out later in the story, called Lara, um, and she was using herself basically to get money of these kids and stuff <sighs> whole big thing so lot um so ivy will go and follow him she got the password from cal after using her bad voice she goes up there and she found she heard these footsteps and then she followed these footsteps and ends up hiding down until she found out finds this body his body's just laying on the floor she only could see the feet of the trainers and she was like oh crap He's dead, but she doesn't know exactly if it was Bony Mahoney. Um, and then she moves a little bit closer and she finds. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you see my bin, that's just. <laughs> Whoopsies. Um, yeah, sorry, my dog was barking at the postman. That's it. So she moved forward and she saw this uh, needle and she fainted. So the boys were like, oh crap, so what will we do now? But in the far back distance, they could hear. Um, it's police sirens and they're like hmm that's strange it's getting quite clear and quite louder and louder and to the point where the police um, are actually outside this studio there's a tip so that, that someone went in and this blonde woman in her early 20s late 20s had arrived in there and they found obviously Bernie Mahoney but they didn't see um, the three guys so they went at the back, um, Cal actually took Bonio's um, phone, realizing, not realising that it was not Ivy's phone. So a whole lot of things that they got had happened to them. Um, until they spot another Colden High student skipping school and follow him to the scene of his own murder. In one choice, the move, um, their day turns from dull to deadly and it's about to get worse. It turns out Matteo and Cal still have some things in common. They all have to have connection to the dead kid and they all have hiding something. Now, if they're wondering, could it be that their chance of connection wasn't by chance after all? So we find out more about the guys. So we find Cal was actually, obviously, like I said, he was with the art teacher. He's been hanging, like, dating her while she's been dating other students. And her fiancé, which we did not know at all, is the coach Kendall. And he's been selling drugs in this. And I was like, excuse me? She's like, she couldn't do anything about it. But he's been um, basically forfeiting against her. Because she, I think he probably found out that what he was doing. What she was doing. And she, he did not expect that. Respect at all. But why would she do? She did it because obviously what you're doing. Um, and then all of a sudden... But the, the three, these three guys meet someone else called Charlie, who was also on the list. So Cal, no, sorry, Boney, Charlie and Matteo were on a list. And they're like, why would Matteo be on the list? And obviously we have some secrets from him. And we're like, jeez. So it seems a lot of things were happening. And I don't know. It was a whole big mixture. At first I was like, oh, I'm really excited for this book. And then as slow as I got through the book, I was like, um, I don't know how I feel about the book. The book does not seem like, poof, this is a good book, murder book. I've always wanted to read one, and this book was not there for me. 
So I'm afraid I will not be keeping the book. I will um, send it off to someone else who is happy to read this book. I just couldn't... I was basically, like I said, I was halfway through and I was like, I don't know if I want to carry on reading it, but I did. I read it and I got to the end, so I won't spoil the end or anything like that. But I... <sighs> I don't think I will reread this again, but I do love the author. The author had these names, uh, these words. Uh, do you mind there is strong language in this? Drug use, sexual intentions and stuff like that. There's a whole thing like that in there as well. Should I mention that in the beginning? But yeah, that was the whole thing. So I should stop reading these. Oh, no. I'll leave it down below all my stuff that I think. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time for the next book review. Peace. Bye.